Before getting into this video, I want to thank the people of StatCrunch and the public folders for allowing me to create a histogram with the public data. In this video, we want to answer some questions about histograms. In the histogram to the right, we have data where nurses were asked the question, how many years have you been a nurse? Looking at the various heights of the columns, we can see the frequency of our particular classes. So for example, if we look at the first column, this first column is telling us that 20 nurses responded that they have been a nurse between 0 and up to, but not including, to 10. So this is what's called our first class. The first thing we want to ask here is how many classes are there? How many columns are there? So if we go through and count, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There are six classes, and the class width is going to be the difference between the tick marks here. So from 0 up to, but not including, 10 is the class width. So if we take 10 minus 0, we're going to get 10. And you should see that if you, you'll get that class width regardless of which column you decide to use. 20 minus 10, 30 minus 20. We're going up by tens. The size of the class is 10. When we talk about upper and lower limits, what we're talking about is what numbers are going to be included in this class. So since we are looking at the first class, which is this question, what numbers do you think are going to be found in here? Well, I know zero is, right? If you've been a nurse for zero years, one year, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, definitely between zero and ten. But as we know, histograms in this particular histogram, we're using what are called cut points. So it's going to include zero, but it's not going to include, I'm going to use a parenthesis there, it's not going to include ten. So it'll include zero all the way up to nine. And then when we get into the next class, this will be 10, 11, 12, dot, 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 all the way up to 19, but it's not going to include 20. And this way, it allows us to prevent overlapping. So if 10 was in here and 10 was in here, then we would have multi 10 would be showing up in multiple columns, and we don't want that. So the upper and lower limit what we're looking at is what's the smallest value? Well, it looks like the lower limit for the first class is zero. That's the smallest value that will be included. And the upper limit is going to be nine. So zero all the way up to nine. Now your text or other people might say it differently. It, you could write 9.5, 9.2. What it wants to do is to include all values. But since we're dealing with a discrete data set here, then we could go zero as the lower and nine as the upper. How many nurses were surveyed? Well, if we look at these columns, this is the frequency in each column. So in order to answer this question, I'm just going to add up all the frequencies. 20 plus 37 plus 30 plus 17 plus 10 and plus 1. If you add up all these frequencies, then we're going to get the number of nurses that were surveyed. So if I grab my calculator and I add those all up, I get 100. 15. 115 nurses were surveyed. I got that again by adding up all the frequencies. What percentage of the nurses have worked longer than 30 years? Well, if we look here, 30 years and above, we have 17 in between 30 and 40, not including 40. We have 10 between 40 and 49, and we have one that has worked more than 50. So the total number of nurses who have worked longer than 30 years is 17 plus 10 plus 1. And what we're going to do is divide that frequency by the total number of nurses in the study, which was 15. So this is going to be, there's 28 nurses, if we add up 17, 10, and 1. 28 nurses have worked longer than 30 years out of a total of 115 if we were to convert that to a relative frequency, this would be approximately, if we round to the tenths place, or excuse me, round to the thousandths place, this is approximately 2.243, but since I'm looking for a percentage, to convert this to a percentage, and I should put approximate signs there, 
is approximately 24.3%. 24.3% of nurses have worked longer than 30 years. And then finally, is the data approximately normal? When we talk about a distribution, remember a distribution is just kind of the, side, the overall shape of the data. If we wanted to answer the question, is it approximately normal, then it needs to resemble a bell-shaped curve. A bell-shaped curve in the sense that most of the values occur in the middle, and then as you get away from the middle, the values aren't as frequent. And as you can see here, uh, this is it's, it's approximately normal. I mean, it's, it's not exactly normal that we would say, but we see that most values occur pretty much in the middle, and then as you go from, go to the left a little bit, go to the right, it's fading off. So although this is not perfectly normal, I would be okay with you saying this is approximately normal. And the reason why is because most values are, being, are occurring in the middle where the ends are lower. What we don't want to see is various size columns. So if this was 20, but the second column was 2, and then the third column was 40, we don't want to see up that up and down, up and down constantly. But this is, it's a little bit skewed to the right, where it's skinnier on the right, but it is approximately normal in the sense that most of the values are occurring in the middle.